Hello. Popping on a little bit early just to get myself set up and to give everyone time to pop on this morning. see my screen I can see my comments has everyone had a good week it's Thursday so my daughter my middle daughter works at Chick-fil-a and she said mom Thursdays are always so busy at Chick-fil-a she goes why is that and I said hi Sharon and I said you know what when you're an adult Caitlin you'll understand why Thursdays get busy and I said probably Parents are working. We've had a crazy week. Thursday comes. It's close enough to the weekend that they're like, eh, let's just go eat out. Let's go get some Chick-fil-A. So I said, that's probably why the drive-thru is so packed on Thursdays. But yeah, I get it, right? You're an adult. You understand? <laughs> oh, so um, if you're new, I'm Nicole Steele. I am the owner and designer of thejoyfulstamper.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and can I just say I love what I do. I love stamping. I love that you're here with me, whether you're watching me live or on the replay. So I'm just going to go through some fun housekeeping things that um, Stampin' Up! has going on and that I have going on, actually, and then I'm going to jump into the projects. So I have two projects for you guys. I usually do have two projects. I'll show you what they are and then I'll do the housekeeping. This is called a joy fold card and you untie it and you open up that side and then you open up that side. I love it. I love it. I love that it's Halloween. And then the next one is a slimline card and we are going to use the extra pieces, the car extra cardstock from the first project to make this so that there's no waste. So I have all those things ready for that. And also too, what I've begun doing is if you put a $35 order in my store using the current month's host code by um, the Sunday, midnight Sunday following that week's Facebook live class, I will mail you the components to make, or the project kits to make these projects. Now I can't do the stamping for you, but I'll do as much of the die cutting and embossing as I can. I'll cut the pieces, score them, throw in the embellishments. So, and you'll get that for free um, when you order $35 in my store using the host code. So pretty fun deal. Oh, thank you, Sharon. I have to tell you, I was in the zone when I was making them. I even put it on my Facebook stories. I said, is there, I've had a runner's high before, but is there such a thing as a stamper's high? Because I think I had it that day. You know, I spent the whole day just creating and it was bliss. Total, total bliss. So today starts our designer series paper sales. So there's select packs that are discounted um, and all but one come out to under $10 a pack, which is a really good deal. The only pack that's a little bit more is in good taste, and that's because there's so, so many more sheets in that pack. But even that one is under $20. So go check it out because actually I have about half the papers that are on the, um, the sale list, and I've got lots of samples on my blog using them. And what I'm also doing too is I have been making so many Christmas cards, guys. So if you order from this sale in the month of October, because the sale goes for the whole month, I will send you a four pack of handmade holiday cards. So help me clean up my stash. And if I do say so myself, they're pretty cards. So, oh, thank you for sharing, Sharon. Yeah, I'm going to get to that in a minute, but thank you. You're on the ball. The next thing is the paper pumpkin kit for October is a holiday kit. Joy to the world. It makes eight holiday cards. And something new that they're doing with this kit is they are putting in sentiments that are in English, German, and French. So if you have international friends or families that live here, friends and family that live here that English isn't their first language, um, now you can send them cards in their native tongue. So that is fun. And I, I like this box. I would get it just for this. Yeah, I'm a sucker for packaging. October 10th is the deadline to sign up for Paper Pumpkin for the October kit. And this is the link you'll go to to do that. So 
you can copy that down if you need to. And uh, my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, has all the links for all the things I'm talking about. So that's the hub to go to. And then my reward code for October. It's October 1st. Yikes, can you believe it? So my middle girl turns 18 tomorrow. I'm going to have two adult children. <laughs> I know those of you with kids in your like 30s and stuff are probably laughing at me. But, <laughs> but to me, it's a big deal right now. And to her, too. Uh, my October reward code right there. And again, this is on my blog, too. So what you do is when you order from me, and your order is between $50 and $149, you can use that code and then record um, reward points on your Joyful Stamper tracking sheet. And when you get, I think it was 10 points, you um, get a $50 shopping spree. I'll even pay the shipping and tax on it too. So just print out your tracker sheet. It's again on my blog. And remember to use the reward code every time you order. Now if your order is $150 or more, you don't need to use this code. You can skip it. You're still gonna earn the points, but you will earn um, rewards from Stampin' Up in addition to the points you earn from me. So. My hands are probably covering because I talk with my hands a lot. Oh, okay. So that's the fun stuff going on. Now, sharing. Yes. Okay, Sharon, <laughs> I didn't mail you your ribbon from last week yet, which is good because guess what? You won the snowflake embellishments this week again. Yes. So, I mean, Sharon shares. That's why she's winning all these prizes, guys. She is sharing, and I... I appreciate it because it's it's a sweet gesture. It helps me grow my business, and so I want to say thank you. So that's why um, I draw a name each week from those who have shared my Facebook Live videos. And I can see the number of people who share, but I can't see the names of them. So after you hit that share button, make sure you type the word shared in the comments, and that way I will see who did so. Um, so Sharon, I will mail out both of your prizes from last week and this week together. And this week's prize is going to be square vellum doilies. I love these things so much. You can color them, you can cut them, you can use them as is, you can heat emboss on them. This will be something really fun to play with. So um, again, just share the video and your name will go into a drawing, which next week I will announce the winner for these doilies. Okay, thanks guys. Ah, oh, hi Sherry. You are a new name to me, so welcome, and we're going to start stamping now, all right? So we are going to start with the Joyfold card. Now, I, I went crazy over the top with this, so um, yeah, get yourself a drink, sit back, relax. We're going to have fun with this one. We are going to have fun with this one, I promise you. Um, and it's just so super fun. So I got the tutorial for this from Split Coast Stampers. And I have been on their site for like 14 years now. And just a never ending wealth of ideas. I love that place. Okay, I'm in love with the magic in this night suite. It's in the holiday catalog. Um, and I pulled out Gorgeous Grape and Pumpkin Pie to start with this project okay so we're gonna do a little scoring here and I'm gonna pull out my non stampin up scoring board stampin up does have one it's called a simply scored board um, but I'm gonna use what I have okay so in the link to this video I will post when it's over a project sheet that has all the measurements for what I'm making today so you don't have to try and write these down it's got photos it's got a supply list it's super handy so I try to make it easy and fun for you guys. So this is an eight and a half inch by four and three quarter inch piece. Wait, let me get my notes here. I'm sorry. Eight and a half inch by four and a quarter inch piece of gorgeous grape cardstock, and I'm gonna score it at five and a half inches. Okay. Then I'm gonna take a piece of pumpkin pie. This is three eight three inches by eight inches, and I'm gonna score this one at four inches. Okay. Now I want to show you something with this gorgeous grape. So this is the piece that I cut for um, my joy fold card. And at first, this is what it looked like. It was an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper. All right. And I cut it at four and a quarter inches here. You can see on that longer side. So what that did 
is I have this piece over here that I'm going to use to make a slimline card with, which is the second project I have for today. That way you get zero waste. You'll get two cards from one sheet of cardstock still, even though they're a little bit off kilter um, from an A2 card with the measurements, but it's still going to be okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, this is a Halloween card, so I have got to grunge this thing up. So I'm going to take a Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad and I'm going to brush it along these edges here. So I'm just curious, while I'm doing this, how long have you guys been paper crafting, which can include stamping, scrapbooking, paper quilling? Um, there's a lot of different ways you can play with paper, right? Are you new to it? Have you been doing this for decades and you're an old pro? Well, not old. You're an experienced pro. Okay, and I'm just doing the edges, and I'm even going to do this fold right here. And I did both sides of this paper so that it'll show both on the inside and outside of the card. And I'm also going to do it with this piece of pumpkin pie. Now what's really great about making Halloween projects is if you get smudges and smears, it looks like it was supposed to be a part of it, right? <laughs> So I got into stamping because of my sister-in-law. And actually, I was a scrapbooker um, first. I went to a creative memories party when I was 24. I wanted to make a wedding album for my parents. And then my sister-in-law, a couple years later, decided to show me how to use alphabet stamps on my scrapbook pages. And it blew my mind. I need to get a baby wipe. It blew my mind. I could stamp. I didn't have to buy stickers over 25 years and not too good at it, Sharon. <laughs> Sharon, Sharon, you have sent me cards. You are good at it. I thought they were cute. In fact, the one that you sent from Mystery Stamp Hour, um, you used that whale of a time paper. I still have it up on my sideboard. I love to display the cards I get, so it's still up there. Okay, so we got these inked and grunged up and you could see yeah I had ink on my fingers and it's it's gonna be just fine now we are going to pull out this magic in the night designer series paper and I said in my little teaser to this that you were gonna get to use a lot of patterns which is a good thing if you have a lot of designer series paper or let's say you have patterns in the pack that you just can't decide on you can use them all. We're going to use three different patterns for this card, and you actually could use four if you wanted to. Sherry, you've been stamping less than one year. Oh, wow. So you're relatively new to stamping. Oh, my goodness. Are you finding it fun? Isn't it incredibly addictive? <laughs> you can never have too much paper and stamps and ink and colors, right? Okay, so what I did with this Magic in the Night paper is I took my paper snips, and I opened them up and took the blades are really sharp. And I just gently rubbed it along the edges of this. Now you can see if you're, you know, if you go a little bit too hard, it'll tear. But again, it's a Halloween project, so it is fine. And I just went along the edges and it tore it and roughed it up a little bit, which I love that look. And we're going to glue the pieces down now. So this piece right here is four inches by five and a quarter inches. And that's what's on the back. And... I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue to adhere this. Now when you glue this down, uh, make sure that this fold opens on the left hand side. That's what we want. And I'm just going to lay that down like that. And even after you've already glued this down, you can even take your fingernail and rough it up even a little bit more if you wanted to. Okay. Then I'm going to fold this shut and I'm going to take this piece right here, which is two and three quarters by four inches. Now, when you cut your paper, because I'm going to tell you this, and the reason I'm telling you this is because I make this mistake all the time. Some patterns have directions to them, like this one, not so much. So it didn't matter how you cut, cut it. This one, I knew I wanted the lines to go vertical, not horizontal. So... I double checked. I may even have triple checked before I measured and cut. Before I cut, I mean, because I wanted to. I so many times I have cut my paper and realized I cut it with the pattern going the wrong way. 
same with this one. You want your bats probably to face up right, I'm guessing. I think this would be pretty on a wedding card, but we're going to use the bats since it's a Halloween card. And these pieces are going to go on this pumpkin pie piece. And these measure two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And we're going to glue one here and we're going to glue one on the inside. Now for this pumpkin pie piece, we want it to open up to the right. So you'll want to pay attention to that when you are gluing these on. So I think this would be a fun Christmas card because here's an idea I have. I almost glued that upside down. I'm thinking for a Christmas card, you know, people like to give out gift card holders, or you could do this as a birthday card too and have the same idea. Have this, put a little pocket in there and you could tuck a gift card or a check or some cash in there. Oops, a little bit more liquid glue there. I mean, I think as paper crafters, we are always looking for ways to pretty up the gifts that we are giving. So this is just another option that you guys have, and it's not hard. Like, I really went over the top with this card. You don't have to. You really don't have to. I'm going to set this aside for a minute, and I'm going to work on it by itself um, before I glue it to this card, okay? But I thought, I didn't want to leave this blank. Like I said, you could put a gift card in there. But we're going to do some stamping. So I'm using the Hallow's Night Magic set. That's part of this suite. And I'm going to use the Trick or Treat stamp. And let me get the right side block here. Okay. And I'm going to use my grid paper to line this up since it's a red rubber image and I can't see through it like the clear stamps. And I'm using a mix of Memento and Gorgeous Grape. I don't know what it is, but purple, any purple, green, orange combination. I love at Halloween time. I think it's beautiful. Okay. And I am not going to be perfect with this. I'm just going to randomly stamp it all over. And then I want to clean it off and I'm going to switch to using it in black, to stamping it in black, just for some variety. And then I'll finish up in the gorgeous grape. Sneak one more in there. Okay. I love that randomness of it. And the nice thing about doing it this way is it doesn't take as long because you're not concerned about, you know, lining it up straight and making sure it looks just right. Maybe that's why I like making Halloween stuff because I don't have to overthink it, right? Are you guys guilty of that? Overthinking it? Okay, so now that's going to get glued there, that's going to fold in, that's going to go like that, but I will glue this last. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp this fun label on a piece of Whisper White cardstock. And I'm going to stamp it in Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. So When you have a larger stamp like this, sometimes it's easier to flip the stamp over and tap the stamp or the ink pad to the stamp. Okay, and I'm going to press down. Now, it may look like not much, but there's a die in the Hallow's Magic, Hallow's Night Magic set that will cut this out into a label shape here. So then I'm going to pull back out my gorgeous grape ink pad and my pretty peacock ink pad. Have you guys ever used blender pens? Sherry, you said you've been stamping less than a year. Have you tried blender pens? They're really fun. They're a fun way to color. So there's two tips and clearly I used this one and I'm going to get out some scratch paper here so I don't mess up my clean sheet. And I'm going to, you can use either tip, it doesn't matter. And you can use the same tip with multiple colors. The key is to scribble off in between. So you see I've got pretty peacock still on there, which is fine because I'm going to color in these leaves with the pretty, pink, pretty peacock. And what I'm going to do is just touch the tip to my ink pad. And then I am going to just flick it to lay down the color. So I'm starting at the base of each leaf and just doing a light flick. And you can get a lot of um, coloring done before you have to reload your blender pen. I mean, you can see all the leaves that I'm doing. And obviously the color is gonna get a little bit lighter as you 
lay it down and move on, but you can make it as dark and as light as you want. I like the flicking motion because it prevents me from overworking the paper. With a blender pen, you don't want to overwork, I missed the leaf, you don't want to overwork the paper, meaning you don't want to go over and over and over it again because the paper will start to ball up and pill. And we don't want that look. Oh, the black glitter paper, Sharon, we are using it. We are going to use it for these projects. So now I'm just scribbling off until no more pretty peacock comes off. Or you can switch to a new blender pen. There's three in the pack, so you can uh, use a different one. Now I'm going to add gorgeous grape to these flowers here. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just flicking that little brush tip starting at the base of the flower. And again, not being super precise about this. And I like how some of the, the whitish of the paper is showing through. I don't want to, don't need to fill it in right away. You haven't used a blender pen. Yeah, it's a really um, nice way to color because you can, you get a pack of blender pens. I think there's three of them for $12 and you can use them with all your ink pads. So you don't have to necessarily invest in all the markers, which is a little bit bigger, well, a lot bigger of an investment. So a pack of blender pens will last you a super long time and you can use them with all of your Stampin' Up! colors because all you have to do is scribble the tip off um, in between inkings. All right, we are going to cut this out now. That's what we're going to do. So let me get my Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. And the plates. one in my cutting place. This is not good. Okay. I can't find one of my other cutting plates, so I'm going to have to go use my backup machine because I can't find it. I don't know where it went to. Nope. All right, I found it. It was lying on the floor by my dog. All right. Lay that down. I've got my sandwiches going. And I am going to use the smaller label from the Hallows Night Magics um, die set. You can see it fits around there really nice. Put my other cutting plate on top. Okay. I'm sorry I had to go look for that plate. You know, I try to prepare as best as I can for these lives, but they are live, right? Plus, I imagine this happens to you all the time, stamping guys, right? <laughs> you find things, or you find, or have things go missing on your desk. And you're looking everywhere going, I know I just saw it. Now I'm going to take a stamping sponge and I'm going to add some black ink to this piece here. And I'm going to just dab my stamping sponge. Now if you're wondering why this is so small, it's because I take the sponge and I cut them into about, I don't know, six to eight pieces to get more use out of them. I'm tapping it in my ink pad and I'm not going to go in circles. I'm actually just going to tap it along this label because I love this speckled look that it gives. And I will hold it up here in a second so you could see. Do you see the speckles, the speckling that goes on? It's a different look than if you were to use a circular motion and I love that look. I sound like you. <laughs> At least you have the luxury, though, of not being in, on the live camera where people are watching you and waiting for you to proceed. <laughs> okay, and you do that until you're happy with the way it looks. I'm happy with it, so I'm going to stop. I lost the tiniest stamp one day. It was in the poinsettia petals, 
stamp set and it was like the little dots that are in the flower center oh here it was stuck underneath something and because what made it even harder is it was a clear stamp and those things they disappear you are looking everywhere for them they're hard to find all right I'm gonna glue this down to this card front with liquid glue just like this um, let me pull up this magic mesh ribbon actually let me take that off for a second we're gonna put magic mesh ribbon down on there and I'm going to just lay down a little bit of snail. There's still some liquid glue on there that'll help hold it, but I'm going to take this magic mesh and I'm going to wrap it around my card base. So that's going to go in there because we're going to wrap the ribbon around the entire card. So making sure it's lined up. And now I'm just going to wrap it around the card. I don't have a specific length in mind. It's just whatever you think you need to tie it into a knot or to a bow. And this ribbon is going to be part of the Facebook project kit. So you will have that to complete this project too. Now we can go ahead and we can glue this label on. Okay. We're a little bit tight. And I'm just going to press it down for a few seconds so that I give it time to adhere since I'm trying to get it to stick through that mesh ribbon. All right, now we're going to have some fun with the layering. I have gone ahead of time. Oh, my dog is whining at the door. Um, I went ahead of time and I stamped these bats right here. Um, with Versamark ink on basic black cardstock. And then I sprinkled on some white embossing powder and then melted it with a heat tool. And then I die cut them with the Hollows Night Magic dies. And I'm gonna stick them on to here. And I also went ahead and I die cut from the black glitter paper, which you were talking about earlier, Sharon, this border die right here. And that's gonna get laid down on top of here. So we'll add that. And again, I'm just going to use, you can use mini glue dots, but I'm going to use liquid glue just to run this on here. And I'm going to just lay this down. You don't have to worry about it being straight. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Okay. Then I'm going to take this piece of Whisper White cardstock and we're going to stamp two sentiments on it. Happy Halloween, and there is magic in this night. One's going to go on the inside of the card, and I have a really cool watercoloring trick to show you. I learned it from another demonstrator. Her name is Elizabeth Price of Seeing Ink Spots. She does super over-the-top stuff, and she loves watercoloring. So um, I thought I would, I would try this, and I... It just, oh my gosh, it looks so nice. And it's so easy too. So you take your water brush and you take your black ink pad. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the ink pad just onto the corner of my block just to put some ink on there. Then what I'm going to do is take my water brush and squeeze out some water onto it. There we go. Just to mix it up a little bit and have a paper towel nearby just to make sure you don't have too much water. <laughs> just like kids, Sharon, just like kids. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start brushing that diluted black ink onto this piece of paper here, this Whisper White cardstock. And this isn't watercolor paper, so you don't wanna go real, real heavy with the ink. And we've got that now. You can wipe it off on your paper towel. And I'm not gonna wipe this off just yet, just in case I wanna add some more color to it. Oh, Lily, I think Lily's gonna start barking now. See, I have the door shut and she hears my husband. It's My husband's gonna eat lunch and she knows that means she gets to go outside with him. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> That's why she wants she's at that door barking like that. Okay, now I'm gonna take a pretty peacock ink pad, and this is what I learned from Elizabeth. So this cardstock is still damp, but what I can do is I'm gonna add a little bit more water to it. And then what I'm going to do is ink up this Happy Halloween in Pretty Peacock ink. And I'm going to stamp it on that wet part of the cardstock. And what will happen is that color will start to bleed because the paper is still wet. I'm going to do the same on this other side here with this There is Magic in this night stamp. Brush a little water on the, this side just to get it a little damp. So my husband came and rescued Lily. <laughs> She's now going to be happy outside. And I'm going to ink it up with Pretty Peacock. And I'm going to stamp it on this right side here. And you'll see that wicks a little bit too because it's wet. Pretty neat, right? Okay, I'll set that aside to dry. You can also use your heat tool to speed it up if you want to. We're going to revisit that technique for the slimline card too. So you'll get to see it demonstrated again. So while we'll let that dry, while we're letting that dry for a little bit, I'm going to apply my bats. My bats are going to go on the inside and outside of my card because I cut enough for that. And I'm just going to use liquid glue. I'm only putting glue on the bodies of the bats because I want their wings to have a little bit of lift to them and I know I know it might get flattened when you close the card I get that but I don't know I I love details in my projects and in my cards so I do that anyways I just even though I know it's probably not gonna matter <laughs> but maybe it will if you're hand delivering this card it, it will be fine and actually for these bats, I didn't use liquid glue. I used a glue dot. The reason being because I'm going through this glimmer paper and I really, really want it to stick. So I've got that bat and I've got that bat. Here's a little tip for you guys. If you're mass producing cards, which the season for that is coming up, and you can stick all of your embellishments on a whole roll at one time of glue dots, and then when you go to put them on your cards, so if you're doing an assembly line, you can just pick them off and put them on your cards. So it's a fast way to help make the mass production process simpler. Okay, and I'm gonna put that one there. Now let me see if this is still, it's still a little bit damp, but it's still all right. Okay, now something else we're gonna do with this. We're gonna put a little shimmer spray onto it. And this is a little concoction I made with champagne mist shimmer paint. So I put about five drops of this into a stamp and spritzer. And then I filled it the rest of the way with 70% rubbing alcohol. And I saved a paper pumpkin box um, so that I could store my spritzer in there. And I have it at the ready. And this also acts as a containment because this stuff will go everywhere. So I'm just going to give it a couple spritzes. And because it's rubbing alcohol, it won't warp your paper and it will dry quick. Do I have a project kit for sale? Um, for this particular project, you mean Sharon, or just in general, like any kind? I um, don't know if you're referring to a specific one or not. Okay, now I'm gonna cut this down like this. I told you there was a lot of detail on this card. Oh, hold on a second. Okay, I'm going to cut this down, and I'm going to flag the ends here a little bit. An easy way to do that, snip in the middle of the end, then go from the corner to the top of that snip, and then I flip it over and I go from this corner to the top of that snip, and then it's flagged. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crumple this up. And it's still a little bit damp, so it's... It's very pliable and easy to work with and the thing is as it dries it's going to hold that crumpled shape which is very exciting to me <laughs> very exciting oh just in, in general you're talking about um you already got the Christmas one I think because I still have a couple ones of those left and actually I am going to be sitting down to putting together and putting together a project kit um, 
probably next week. So whenever I have that done, it'll go out in my newsletter. And I think you, you subscribe to my newsletter. So my newsletter is the best place to find out about that stuff because it comes right to you. You don't have to go hunting for that. So the only thing is, Sharon, I'm not sure if I'm doing the Snowflake Splendor or Poinsettia Place. I have to look at the inventory report to see what um, they have uh, in, in stock. But all that paper is on sale, so I thought, wow, this would be a good time to uh, to do one of those. So it's going to be one of those two. And as soon as I have it developed, I will announce it, Sharon. And thank you for getting them. I'm glad you like them. So we have that, and now we're going to do this to the inside. I love making those kits, by the way, too. It's fun coming up with the ideas and thinking about what people might find fun. And I'm going to trim this down just a little bit because it's too, a little bit too long. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to crumple it. Who knew you could do so much with paper, right? You should have seen me when I was designing this. I was actually sitting here talking to myself. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. Oh, look at that effect. Okay. And I'm just going to twist those ends up a little bit. And then we have iridescent pearls. I love these beauties. Did I put any on the end? Yeah, I put some on the inside of my card too even. So let's fill these in and we'll put one down by the back here and then let's put some on the front of our card. Put one there and I'll put one over there. I feel like I need one more. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. We have to compare it to the original to make sure that I got everything. E. Oh yeah. Just my greeting is a little bit skinnier on the one I just made. But that's okay. We'll just crumple it down a little bit more. Let more of all that goodness show. Oh gosh, I love this. Do you guys like this? It doesn't have to be a Halloween card. I know, I know not everybody celebrates Halloween or wants to send Halloween cards or, you know, stuff like that. But I just love this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talking and answering yourself. Ooh. Fortunately, I always have somebody in my house that can answer me back. And then you can... Um, Tie this shut too. You can either do a knot if you don't like to fuss with bows, or you can tie it in a bow. This magic me or metallic mesh ribbon will tie in a bow really easily. And I love how glittery it is. So glittery and sparkly. There we go. Pretty, pretty. All right, now let's do the second project with the leftover of this one. And that would be the slimline card. Are you guys familiar with slimline cards? They have become quite popular. They fit in a business sized envelope, which you can go to the Dollar Tree and get a whole box of them for a buck. So that's definitely one of the appeals to the slimline cards. My the reason I like them, I love all the real estate. I, it just means I can add more stuff to it, right? Because if you've watched me long enough, you know my mantra is more is more when it comes to card making and this card has more let me tell you it has more so let's get started with that project thank you Sharon Sherry I hope you're getting some good ideas for your stamping sessions so this piece remember was the leftover from what we cut in the joyfold card so it's eight and a half inches by six and three quarters of an inch and actually you want it this way because we're gonna score down the middle here of the six and three quarter inch side at three and three eighths of an inch. And that, it's a, it's a fraction of an inch less than a traditional slimline card, but it'll still fit into your business sized envelope. Okay, and you're gonna to get to see me do this. I'm gonna take my scissors and grunge up 
these edges. We want to get it nice and messy. Do you like not like this sound? Like, is it like fingernails down the chalkboard for you? I hope not. <laughs> Nobody has chalkboards anymore. Did you ever notice that you have grandkids or kids? There's no chalkboards in schools. They're all those dry erase boards. I had to buy my kids dry erase markers because the teachers didn't want to share them in the classroom. They didn't want, you know, multiple hands touching them. So I had to buy them some. And that's when I realized, wait, don't you guys use chalkboards? And I said, no, we don't. Things have changed since I was in school, that's for sure. Okay, so we've got this nice, big, open space. Now, let me find my pieces here. There we go. Oh, did they fall out? What's going on here? There we go. Oh, I know what I did with them. I stuck them in an empty storage container. I saved my empty embellishment container so I can put all my little bits and bobs in them. And we need our pieces here. Here we go. So this is black glimmer paper. Bla excuse me, black glitter paper. And this is a piece of Magic in the Night DSP, Designer Series paper. And I don't know if you guys knew this, so let me pull out a sheet. And I will show this to you. So this is the paper I was using the dies from this suite will cut out the patterns on this designer series paper. So how, you know how I told you I heat embossed, stamped and heat embossed those bats on the other project. If you don't want to go through all that or you don't have those supplies, you can use these dies and get the same look with these images. And I'm going to use that to my advantage on this card here. Because if you can see, I cut a three inch by four inch piece of that paper and I used these dies to cut the bats out. That's what is here in my little container here, the little bat pieces. And I cut another one out there and there was a partial one of this bat up here. So I cut him out too, but I'm going to put it right back and you'll never even know it's missing. We're going to fill those in. Then what I did is I used this same die and I also used this little trio of bats, these little tiny cute, would you use the word cute for bats? Um, I cut those out of this black glimmer paper and I'm going to punch them out right now because I already went ahead and did that. And this black glitter paper does not shed. You can rub it on yourself and you can see it doesn't come off at all. So you won't have glitter everywhere when you're done working with this, which is super nice. I'm going to glue these pieces down just like this onto this card base here. And I'm going to be making sure that I put the liquid glue in all those little areas too, because I want to make sure this piece stays down flat. So I'm going to put that one there. This is another one of those no waste techniques. All right, and then we're gonna glue this. I know these look like something you would throw in the garbage, right? These scraps, but I promise you, it's going to look good. Stampin' Up's been doing that a lot lately, coming out with designer series paper that you can use the coordinating dies with to cut out the images. And that's really a great idea when you maybe don't wanna color, um, or even if you don't have the stamp set, maybe you just have the dies. Okay, so we've got some big empty spots there, but we're going to fill them in. We're going to do a little switcheroo here. I'm going to take my, the, the bats that I cut from the black glimmer paper, I'm going to take and I'm going to put them up here. And I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to do all that. Then what I'm going to do is take the bats that I cut from the pattern paper, and I am going to put those on the bottom here. But here's a tip for you. The particular piece I chose, so you can see the bat I cut up there, um, he, I think this one got his wing clipped off. You can cut 
around that pattern paper to make sure that you get a section where you can cut out whole bats like I did with this one. So this bat came from that one, this bat um, came from this piece here, so it worked. This one, his wing got clipped a little bit, so I. But all you have to do with that one is just go um, cut another one from another piece of paper, or you can stamp and emboss that, and I told you, it, it looks the same, so it works. It works, but I've got lots of little pieces here that I can use to fill in, so we're just going to do like a little mixing and matching of all of them. And let's take, this one was from the pattern paper. So I'm doing like a dry layout of them. I'm not putting adhesive on them yet. I just want to see where I want to position everything before I commit. I have a fear of commitment when it comes to stamping. This is the piece that got cut out from up here. We're just going to go ahead and glue that one down. And you'll never even know that that got out when it wasn't supposed to. Now here's the thing, um, I tried to figure out a way to die cut that since th these are joined together to just die cut out this bat, but it was so fussy and so complicated. I'm like, I'm just going to cut them out and I'll glue them back down. It's fine. So now let's use a combination of mini dimensionals and regular dimensionals. Here's the thing, Stampin' Up! has black Stampin' Dimensionals. I recommend those for this project. I did not have them. And that is why I am using white Stampin' Dimensionals. But if you have the white Stampin' Dimensionals and you don't like being able to see the white sides, you can take a black Stampin' Blends marker and use the brush tip to color the sides of the Stampin' Dimensionals so that they're black. And I actually might have to do that with these teeny tiny bats down there because the mini Stampin' Dimensionals may even be too big for them. I'm going to bend the wings up a little bit to give them some lift. Make it look like they're in flight and about to fly off this card. I need some longer nails to pull these up. And put that one there. I like the reverse image. So you can see part of his wing got lopped off, but that's okay. This black glimmer one, it's gonna cover it and it's okay that it extends off the edge of the card because this card is narrower than a business size envelope. So there'll be room in the envelope for it um, to not get crushed. Now we're gonna put those little bats. Now these black, um, are, these bats are going right back where they did get cut out. And I'm going to put some rhinestones on them to make them stand out a little bit more. These are the little guys that I said the mini Stampin' Dimensionals might even be too big for them, but I will go back and touch them up with my Stampin' Blends marker. And I'm going to be adding some la more layers onto this in a minute, bending their wings up too. And you can slightly offset these guys so that some of that gorgeous grape cardstock shows through. Okay, so now you can see that little bit there is showing. I don't know if you can see that. Some of those Stampin' Blends are dimensionals. So I'm just going to take my marker and I'm just filling it in so that you can't see it. And then I'm going to take some little rhinestones and I'm going to use the smallest ones and I'm going to pop them onto this bat here. So for my daughter's birthday, she absolutely loves cheesecake. Do you like how I jump from topic to topic? <laughs> she loves cheesecake and she always wants to go to the Olive Garden. That's her favorite place. I'm having trouble picking these up. Um, this year she decided, I mean, after years and years of going to the Olive Garden and she loves her cheesecake, she wants to go to Cheesecake Factory because we've never eaten there for dinner. We've always just gotten the dessert to, to go, but and she loves all their flavors. So that's where we are headed Saturday night. I'm looking forward to it. I can't believe she's 18. Oh, what are we doing next? I gotta think. Oh, the greeting. The greeting and the ribbon. I'm gonna lay down some more of this magic mesh ribbon right down in the middle here. And let's cut it out. 
And this also extends off the card, not a problem because there's plenty of room in the envelope. And I'm gonna use Stampin' Seal, or I still have the snail, and I'm just gonna lay a little bit of it down and put this ribbon on there. If you want to, you can fold the ribbon, you can scrunch it up, whatever you wanna do. It's your card. Then I'm going to take, I love this part. I really, really like this part. Very vanilla scalloped lace trim. And I'm gonna cut a length of that and we're gonna color it. We are gonna color it with some Stampin' Blends markers. I don't need the black one for that. That was just to fill in the dimensionals that were showing through. I'm using Light Smoky Slate and Light Highland Heather, and I'm gonna be using the brush tips of these. Your son is 46 years old. Oh, thank you, I'll let her know. Oh, you're 46, I'm 45. We're about the same age. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this brush tip and I'm just gonna lightly and quickly go over this ribbon. You definitely want a layer or two of scratch paper underneath when you do this because Stampin' Blends are alcohol ink markers, so they will bleed through. And you're also coloring on a piece of lace, which is has holes in it and it's porous. Now I'm gonna take the Light Highland Heather and I'm just going to go over top of it. And you can do this with blends and not worry about contaminating your markers. Okay, we'll put those back. Lily can't make up her mind. She's been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And now I'm going to use glue dots to stick down this piece of lace and we're gonna put the greeting over top of it so it's okay if the glue dot is showing through that lace because our um, sentiment is going to hide it I love that purple and gray together it looks so spooky okay and now I'm going to pull out another piece of whisper white cardstock let me check my scrap drawer here do you guys have bags and bags of scraps? Surely I have one in here that will work. There we go. We're gonna do this one. Okay, and remember how I saved that ink from the previous project? We're gonna do the same thing on this one again. Squeeze a little water on there, pick some up with the brush and just quickly go back and forth on here. Oh, now my dog wants to sit with me. She can't get through my mess though. Okay. Come on, Lily. Come on. Do any of you guys have pets that like to stamp with you? She likes to sit on my chair behind me while I stamp. We're gonna use Happy Halloween again, but instead of using Pretty Peacock, we're gonna use Gorgeous Grapes. So I need to clean this off. Then we're gonna stamp that on this slightly damp piece of cardstock. And stamp it right here. My paper is not as wet this time, so it's not going to bleed as much. If I wanted to, I could take my water brush and just dab a little bit of color on there to get it to uh, move around a little bit more, but I'm gonna leave it like it is. And I'm going to give it a quick trim here. And I actually like that it's still a little bit damp because I'm going to fold it up again, smush it to get it nice and crumply. You must be their favorite, Sharon. Ah, oh, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> I just love to sit here and just play with it. I do make not quite so complicated, well, not complicated, but not 
just, I do make cards that aren't quite so detailed, um, too, but I just, I don't know, it's whatever I'm in the mood for. I like to do a little bit of both. I'm going to apply those with Stampin' Dimensionals. Like I said, I I spent the whole day stamping a couple days ago, and I just got into a groove and just kept going. And did you guys ever do this? You sit here and you're making something, you're like, you just keep thinking of things. Like, oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do that. And one idea just it leads to another, and you don't know when to stop. That was these two, but I'm happy with them. Okay, we're gonna add iridescent pearls if I can find them in my big mess here. Here we go. But we're not done with this one. I'm gonna put a little pearl right there. I'm gonna scatter some up here. But I'm adding a little bit more touches to this, okay? I'm going to do the inside of the card first, and then I'll show you what I'm doing. This is the Cobwebs 3D embossing folder, and I completely covered it with that champagne shimmer paint concoction I showed you. And I stamped There is Magic in This Night in Memento Black Ink right on top of the already embossed cardstock because I wanted it to be have some little non-filled in areas where I stamped over the raised part of this embossed piece and I am going to put this on with the multi-purpose liquid glue and I'm gonna put this at the bottom of my card I was determined to find a way to use this cobweb folder in my card so then I thought I'm gonna decorate the inside of my card and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp those larger spiders from the Hallows Night Magic set stamp set and then I am going to sponge them with a little bit of basic black ink just to darken them up a little bit and get them a little bit spookier looking. I wanted it to look like my spiders were crawling up my card. Yeah, these project kits for this Facebook Live class are going to be full. <laughs> Because I used so much stuff. So, there'll be a lot of bits and pieces in your project kits. Alright, I'm not using dimensionals because I want the card to be able to close. Okay, so I just wanted to look like them to look like they were crawling up there. Then, there's also this little tiny spider in there. Now Sharon, I know we've had this discussion about not killing spiders. <laughs> I actually think that spider stamp is cute. Really, really cute. And we're gonna stamp him in memento ink right up the edge of our card here. Just like that. Oh my, this would be a fun card to get if I do say so myself. All right, and we have, now I have some extra bats here. I suppose I could glue those inside too, but um, I'll just stick to the spiders. Okay, last thing for this card, we're gonna pull back out my paper pumpkin shimmer spray box. And that's right, we're gonna, co we're gonna coat this thing. I'm gonna do the whole front. Now obviously I don't need to do the black glitter paper half, but these guys can get sparkly too, so we are just going to spray it all. This card is going to shine and shimmer. Okay, and that is it. Those are the two projects. Oh my gosh, I, I just thank you guys for joining me today. So remember that you can get the kits to make these two projects um, with a $35 order in my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net. You can use the current month's postcode, which is this right here. And if you order by midnight on Sunday, I will send you the kits to make these two projects for free. 
And if your order is over $50, it'll also earn you Joyful Stamper reward points too. But you can go to my blog, thejoyfulstamper.com, to check it out. Sharon, I will mail the share prizes out to you. And um, anybody else watching, don't forget to share the video for a chance to win a package of square vellum doilies next week. And I really, I had fun today. I hope you guys had fun too. Thanks for watching, and I will be cooking something up for next Thursday. And yes, I will also be working on my next um, creativity kit to, um, to go. Just have to decide on which suite I'm going to use. So, all right, guys, I will see you next Thursday. Bye.